today I'm going to be discussing season 5B of Once Upon a Time. If you haven't seen all of season 5, leave because there's going to be spoilers of what happened in this season. I've already reviewed the first half of the season as Dark Emma Swan, but now since I've become Light Swan again, I'm back in my original garb, my uh, red leather jacket and my hair is down. My general thoughts and feelings about the season now that it has officially ended is that there was a lot of pain in this season. It wasn't easy. It was a very difficult season to watch. The last four episodes I did not watch live like I usually do. I actually waited until the whole season was done and I marathoned it because I got spoiled about how Captain Hook was gonna stay in the underworld and I wasn't about that life. I'm like, no, no. They, they didn't go all the way back down to the underworld just to leave him there. I feel like the last half of the season wasn't as copacetic as like the first half of the season. The first half of the season flowed really nicely. They had those really fun flashbacks to Camelot. This part of the season it was all in the underworld and we were kind of stuck there. But I really did like the individual episodes. I could definitely pick out like each episode because each episode was a specific character driven episode like we had a bell episode with Gaston we had an episode about Zelina and Regina as they are sisters we also had an episode about Dorothy and Ruby those episodes really stood out in the season I think for me I really enjoyed those and all the flashbacks that they created and surprisingly enough I wasn't as into like the whole Captain Swan this time around obviously that's what we were there for in the underworld that we were there for Captain Swan specifically I was more interested in Regina I just I, I just think Regina is the most interesting character on the show and I was really interested in Zelina's role in this show. I thought she had an incredible character arc. Finally, she wasn't such of a backstabbing bitch anymore. We opened up with the 100th episode in the last half of the season with Neil and not really a flashback but it was kind of like a premonition with Neil and that was really nice to see him back again. I really enjoyed the arc with Regina and her parents and how we got to see our hero heroes lead the souls in the underworld to a better place or sometimes to you know to hell which wasn't the greatest place ever. Definitely my favorite episode of the season I'd have to say is the sisters episode with Zelina and Regina. It was fun to see Cora back in action and kind of having a good relationship with Regina and then finally having a good relationship with Zelina and the flashback to when we got to see Zelina help out Regina because Regina was sick and then Cora giving Regina and Zelina those memories back. Oh they were just like it was so good it was like emotionally so good if you've been following along on my bi-yearly reviews of once upon a time you know that I have a dislike for Zelina and I'm so glad she redeemed herself in this last half of this season and Zelina started trusting Regina like especially when she handed over her baby because she accidentally hurt her little girl and a little girl didn't have a name for the entire season <laughs> Zelina had a nice twist in this last half of the season with Hades, how they kind of had a little romance brewing a couple years ago, or maybe a hundred years ago, we don't know. That blue hair was a crack up. Like, every time it just like, whoosh, I couldn't help but laugh. It was so corny. It didn't really look that good, and I know that they were trying to go after the whole, like, Hercules movie. I like the actor who played Hades. He seemed evil. He wasn't the most evil. I feel like the most evil in the season has to be Rumpel. Rumpel was so evil this season. I think the part that made me just hate him was when he banished Mila to that the, 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 that river, the, the river of souls. She's just gonna be swimming in that river forever now and it's terrible. She was trying to help Hook. That character just has not been given the greatest opportunities in life. She married Rumpel, this sniveling coward of a man. He signs away their second child, almost killing Neil. Then, when Rumpel becomes the Dark One, he kills Mila. When she has some peace in the underworld, she's banished to a life of swimming. 
I remember watching the first couple episodes and trying to figure out like what they're going to do with this last half of the season and the first two episodes definitely didn't have much plot. I liked that we had Hercules in there but I was sad that he was already dead and he's not actually going to be in like real life. Hercules is one of my favorite Disney movies. And then we finally find Killian and I really love that scene between Killian and Emma and where she's saving him from the noose or he's like all strung up. He's like, I thought I told you not to come for me. You think I'm gonna listen to you? And then we started getting some plot with Rumple and Belle. Hades actually has the contract for the second child, and Belle happens to be carrying Rumple's second child. I really enjoyed Belle's storyline in this season. We kind of got a little bit more of her, even though she was on pregnancy leave and she had to take, you know, the sleeping curse because, you know, she was actually pregnant in real life. That whole episode with Gaston was so good. I really, really liked the episode. That must be like my second favorite episode of the season. But then she's the one who actually banished him to this swimming pool of souls. Yikes, Belle. I feel like that's going to come up later on in the series. And for the fact that Rumpel can't wake her up from the sleeping curse, it has to be her father. Oh, I'm excited. That's going to be so much fun next season. I feel like Rumpel next season is going to get even more powerful and more like power hungry because of his second child now on the way. I don't feel like he's going to be so Subdued. My other favorite episode has to be the Ruby and Dorothy episode. This is the first time we're seeing an LGBTQ relationship on Once Upon a Time. And I wasn't expecting this. I was expecting Mulan uh, to, to be paired up with somebody. But it turns out Ruby? Like, Ruby's the one who's going to get a girlfriend? Like, poor Mulan. She keeps pulling the short straw. First with Sleeping Beauty and now with Ruby. I mean, I'm glad that they're friends. They didn't play it as a jealousy thing with... Mulan and Ruby. One of my favorite scenes from that episode has to be the bicycle scene with Hades and Zelina. I just remember this one line that Regina says. She's like, we're not in Storybrooke anymore. I love the ties back to the original story in the movie. Because I took that break in watching the last four episodes of the season, I wasn't as heartbroken as I probably should have been. I was majorly spoiled because I know some of you really want to talk about it, but you put them in my mentions. And I, I found out about like how Killian was gonna stay in the underworld. It kind of ruined that part of the season for me. Like I wasn't as heartbroken as I was when I watched the mid-season finale with Killian dead. Like that destroyed me. I've never cried so much in a TV show before, ever. If you think about it, Killian died so many times this season. I think you can definitely say now he's the definition of a survivor. I swear, if Eddie Kitsis and Adam Horowitz kill him off next season, I'm going to be so angry because they killed off Robin Hood. Killian is my favorite character on the show next to Regina. And if they decide that he's not gonna be on the show anymore, I won't watch it. Like I was on the verge of not watching the last half of the season because I thought Killian was dead. Like I thought he was done so. Talk about that scene where she's going up in the elevator and they're like clutching hands together. I think I can reenact it. part in the season is when we got to see the backstory to the red leather jacket. That was so good. That flashback was great. I'm so glad we got to see that. Going into the episode before the two-part season finale is the episode that I just talked about where they go back to Storybrooke and we come up with Hades and he kills King Arthur. The little jerk just got killed. Like, Hades just like killed him. That was very jarring to see. But King Arthur went down to the underworld and helped Killian find the missing pages to the Once Upon a Time storybook. I could barely tell Colin O'Donohue and King Arthur, I don't know his name. I could barely tell them apart. Like, how many of you guys thought so? They looked like twins. Like, working together, they looked like brothers. But that reminds me that Killian's actual brother was actually in the show. It was not a big a deal. Zelina kept believing the lie that Hades was actually good. Like, can you just listen to your sister? You listen to her about everything else so far, but when it comes to Hades, you're not listening to her. And that was really bugging me. I'm like, come on, Zelina, get it through your thick skull. He's not good. Hades has his brother Zeus lightning rod crystal thing that can like kill anything. I'm not as emotionally attached to Robin and Regina. I'm emotionally attached to Regina's happy ending. And this was so sad. 
He killed Robin Hood. They didn't just kill him. Katie says that when you get killed by Zeus's crystal, you don't go to heaven or hell or the underworld. You just don't exist anymore. That's not a nice thing to think about, especially for Regina to know that he just doesn't exist. He didn't go anywhere. But then Zelina gets a crystal and he she kills Hades and that was very satisfying. Both sisters had their loves perish at the same time and they were comforting each other and it was just so, so nice to see like the sisters reunite through their pain. Now going into the season finale, I don't like how disjointed the last half of the season always feels with Once Upon a Time. They wrap up part B's storyline and like the episode before the season finale and then our characters go on like a mission or a journey at the end. I think Once Upon a Time season finales could be movies. I enjoy them so much. Like I loved when Killian and Emma went back in time. That was probably my most favorite episode of all time. I really enjoyed the Heroes and Villains season finale last year. That was really good. This season finale was not as good as the previous ones, but it was still enjoyable. Like the main point was that Henry wanted to banish all magic. Rumpel wasn't about that, so he was gonna go after Henry and kill his own grandson. Like the guy is evil. I mean, if he's gonna kill his own grandson, then why does he care so much about his second child? Regina and Emma go after their son, and I still love it when Henry calls his mom's moms. He's like, moms! <laughs> He takes a little girlfriend with him. I don't know why she would go with him. They don't have any money. Like, what are you supposed to do? Like, did you steal your parents' credit card or something? But, oh my gosh, before the season finale, and the just conjointed feeling of it all, Hook comes back, he comes back, he comes back, he comes back, he comes back. Robin Hood's funeral, which was devastating, and I was so scared of Regina's reaction to Hook being back. Zeus thought he was deemable to make him back to life to be with Emma. In the midst of Hook coming back and Henry and Regina and Emma going to New York, the rest of our cast of characters get taken to another world. This is the land of untold stories and Jackal and Hyde just happen to be there. So this is the hook into the next Season. Sam Witwer plays Mr. Hyde. I love Sam Witwer. I've, everything that I've seen him in, he's great. I'm so glad that they got him for this next half of the season. The Snow Queen probably was one of my other favorite like villains to come on the show just because I love that actress so much. There's not much I can talk about plot wise with the season finale other than the fact that there is actually magic in our world and all you have to do is put a coin into a fountain. That scene, can we talk about that scene for a second, was the most cringeworthy scene out of all of the season. Henry standing up like on the top of the stairs in the middle of New York City to get people to believe in magic. Everyone's just like, yeah, let's throw coins into the fountain. I was like, stop Henry, this is so weird. And then like it would shoot back to Emma and Regina and they just had like this really proud look on their face. And it's like, no, no, that doesn't make, no. Oh, this is so stupid. Also, Dr. Jackal created a serum that could split your personality. And in the next season, we're gonna get a bunch of untold stories. So they're going to be stories from the land of untold stories. Not like the main stories that Disney always tells, but different stories. But the best part of the season finale was the evil queen. She's back! And Regina was talking about how she's never gonna get a happy ending and that she's just doomed for sadness. I was thinking like how 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 is she going to stay this good heart and so they figured out that she can also take the serum to split her personality from the evil queen and kill that side of her but she does she successfully splits her personality it was so good seeing the evil queen and all of her bejeweled ball gown glory i'm so glad that snow white and emma stayed with her to help her along in this and that mary margaret said that you are our family like this is our family that they're all family now and it just oh that just it makes me feel the feels every time like they bring up the whole family thing. Even though the family once upon a time is so discombobulated, I love it so much. Like this is a show for everyone because this family is just so weird. I don't think I've ever seen a more weird family in fiction. But that's not the end of Eva Queen because she's back. She took that Chinese man's heart and now she lives. So the evilest part of Regina 
lives, and she is going to be one of the main villains in next season, and she is going to create hell for Regina. But does this mean that Regina's happy ending is actually cured? Like, is she going to get a real happy ending now because she doesn't have that evilness inside of her? I hope so. Like, I don't know what's gonna happen to her next season. Like, will she find love again? I also really want to see Killian and Emma tie the knot. Like, they've been through so much in this last season. And one of the last scenes of the season finale is when Emma actually finally said that she loved Killian and she jumped on him and they kissed and it was just glorious. It's exactly what my shipper heart needed. Maybe Rumpel and the Evil Queen might be in cahoots because they're kind of like on the same side. Rumpel might be too preoccupied with making sure that Belle is safe. Mr. Hyde has Belle now in that little box. That's it for my season 5 B review once upon a time in Underworld. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please tell me your favorite parts of the last half of the season or just general thoughts at all. Like, did you agree with any of my points? The writers have said that next season's going to be different. Like, they're gonna be doing it differently with like the flashbacks, how um, we're gonna see the untold stories more and how they're gonna be flashing back to that land. My favorite season still is season four with Elsa and Anna. I really wanna see those girls back again. They were so much fun. Thank you guys all for watching. Please subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it and you wanna see more from me. I'll see you guys all in the future. Keep calm and fangirl on. And watch Once Upon a Time. I can't wait till it's on again. Bye!